good morning, church family, and thank you, Gage, for not giving me the countdown of death. Um, my name is Kenna McKee, and I'm here today to do um, the devotion with you today. So um, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Oh, Lord, I just... Um, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're doing in my life and um, whoever's watching this, um, their life, Father. You always have a purpose for whatever you are are doing in our lives, Lord. So I thank you for that. I pray that you would just open up our hearts and our minds and, and just prepare our hearts for whatever you have for us today. In your most precious name, amen. Alrighty, family. So today i'm gonna be going over the refiner's fire just kind of touching on that i know we all know the story of um uh the refiner's fire and how you know gold is put into this very very high heat to remove all the impurities and the 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 finer the gold the hotter and the longer the gold has to stay in this um heated place, you know, to remove everything. So, you know, sometimes our, our trials are, you know, maybe we're just like an eight karat gold. I don't even know if that's a thing, but, and sometimes we are going through a 24 karat gold, um, a fire, or maybe even, a it could feel like a hundred K gold fire. So, um, Anyways, where I'm going to start, I have a lot, um, a couple different verses this morning. So I am going to be looking down a lot and reading. So, um, Forgive me, but here we go. So my first verse is Job 23, 10. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. And just knowing that God is using every test, every trial to prepare us and to draw us closer to him, to remove all those impurities. And I think that's um, such a blessing. And then the next one is Proverbs 17, 3. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the hearts. And I just um, wanted to read my notes in my study Bible. The refiners, the refining of silver and gold is an exacting process involving skill and considerable heat and stress. The refiners work, the refining work of God on his people often requires stress too. And so I just hope like, being reminded because i know when you're in the middle of something it's hard to remember there's a purpose god has a plan god's in control you know and i think it's um i know when we're in the middle of a trial again it's hard to to see the blessings or to understand why but as we come through as we grow and we mature in our walk and we've we've walked with the lord longer and he's brought us through these trials it's so much easier to test him as we get older and so sometimes the heat gets turned up a little bit and um uh and not that i'm smiling because some of these trials they're just they're really hard but i what i learned in just kind of because you know like i said we've heard this analogy or these scriptures many times and what i've got from it this most recent time is it just kind of blessed me because the 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 lord uses all kinds of different um circumstances and trials to draw us closer to him because he doesn't want to leave us the way um we were when we first came to him and i think that's a blessing it shows his heart for us he desires for us to grow it's just not like a a token okay i have one more i have one more you know like seeker friendly churches god really wants to do a work in us and um just show himself faithful and so i just think that that was sweet and i just was hoping to encourage anybody who's going through a trial right now or in the middle or maybe you're you know at the mountaintop and just to my desire is I am kind of in a really good season of my life right now. I want to serve and worship God the same way and hunger for him the same way I do when I'm in the deepest, lowest valley because we all do yearn for him in different ways. And when we're in the middle of a trial, it's just um, we want to hold on to him so tight, you know, but as the, the trial kind of gets softer and softer, our grip kind of, you know, loosens. And not that we we want it to, but it's just... For me, that's real life, you know, and so, um, like I said, just to encourage you guys that God is always doing a work in our lives and he is so faithful. And I was thinking about, um, 
sorry, as I go to in closing, why God tests our faithfulness through these trials and it just builds our faith towards him. Um, but I thought, you know, what if I know last year when we came back from Mexico, I was all gung ho, ready to learn Spanish. And, um, how much effort have I put in? If I'm being honest with you guys, I already said it in a year ago that I really wanted to learn and, but I really haven't put much effort into it. And if I took that same approach in my Christian walk, that would be really sad, you know, Learning Spanish, it would be a huge blessing, but it's not changing my walk with the Lord. Although it could, you know, but being in his word, I, I need to be spending time with him and putting forth that effort in spending time in the word, you know. So just to encourage you guys not, you know, ever to point fingers. And this is all, a, you know, a story about me and just how we're continually called to grow in Christ. And I just hope, I know Vivian says... She wants to every year grow closer. She hopes that she can look back and and be growing every year. And so I hope that's something, and that's like something that I've put on my own life. I want to be growing. So anyhow, as we're closing here, why our faith is tested. In James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And that seems so hard, um, maybe to a new believer, but just produce, producing that patience. God, I'll sit here and I'll wait with you through this trial because I know, we know that he's going to show himself faithful. He's going to work out us perfectly what he wants to do. And everything has a purpose to glorify the Lord. So um, I hope that's encouraging for you guys today. I know that the Lord has shown himself so faithful in my life. I look back at just some of the times that, and I think that's why I'm on this mountaintop because Life is hard sometimes, and sometimes you just have to go to the Lord. It may not be what you're feeling, but in, in obedience and do what he's calling us to do. And then years down the line, our years down, you'll be reaping the blessings of that trial. And so I just, um, I love my church family. I hope that I encouraged somebody today or just reminded you that um, God is always working in your life because he loves us. So I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer. And I just thank you guys for being with me today. Oh, Lord, I just... Um, I thank you, Lord, that you, again, do not leave us the way you find us, Father, that you want us to grow closer to you. And so you place these um, sometimes horrific trials, sometimes um, not so hard trials, Father, but um, nevertheless, you continually want us to grow closer to you and just to be a a mirror of Jesus, Lord. Let us uh, be the light of the world, Lord. I thank you for your presence and your blessings and our this church body, Lord. And um, I just love you and be with all my brothers and sisters out there today in your most precious name. Amen.